Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I really miss you guys. I feel like it's been a long time since I just made a video where I was sitting here talking to you guys one-on-one. -on -one. And the other day I was scrolling through Twitter and I saw that someone tweeted me that I should do a one word suggestions video because it's been ages. And I read the tweet and I was just like, oh my God, one word suggestions? I, I completely forgot that that even existed. I, for some reason, erased all memory of that series on my channel, which is really sad. It's honestly really sad because I, I really liked that series. And then I went and looked at my YouTube channel and they were right. It's been over a year since I've done my last one word suggestions video. And the last one I did was with my friend Kelsey. It wasn't even just me by myself. It's been such a long time that there's honestly a good chance that some of you guys watching this right now don't even know what that series is. If you don't, it's basically where I ask you guys to send me one word or like one topic and I talk about it. And we go through a bunch of different words and topics and it's just a good time where we get to bond. We really get to have a, like a bonding moment. And you know what? We need that. Cause again, I miss you guys. Aww. So yeah, I went on Instagram and I asked you guys to send me one word. I'm gonna go through a bunch of them right now and we're gonna talk about them. Okay, you wanna start off there? We can start off there. Um, YouTube is changing. It's, it's changed a lot. I've been on the platform for like over 10 years now and it has changed so much over the past decade. But I don't know about you guys, there's something about this past year on YouTube where I feel like it has changed so much, pretty much since the start of the pandemic. And when I think about it, I'm like, I, I don't really know what the reason is, but it just makes me question the future of YouTube which is a little scary. But in the meantime, I still really enjoy being a content creator, but I will say I'm really, really, really looking forward to things going back to normal, or at least like the new normal, because I was kind of in the middle of evolving my content and then pandemic. Like I was doing all these travel videos and then all of a sudden we can't travel anymore. Like I couldn't have had any worse timing than that. You guys, I have this video idea written down and it literally just says top 10 Gen X Pen top 10s where I would go through the Gen X Pen top 10s and pick my top 10 Gen X Pen top 10s. I didn't realize how many of those fucking videos I have made, but there are like 50 of them on Awesomeness TV's channel. I have not seen those in years. I stream on Twitch now a lot. And if you're not at the shows, you should definitely think about coming. I really wanted to plug this here because I've been really, really, really enjoying Twitch and I'm so excited about using a new platform. I'm not stopping making YouTube videos anytime soon, but I have been using this platform for like over a decade now. So it's really nice to make content somewhere else in a different style and it's really, really fun. I don't know if you guys knew this about me, but way back when I started YouTube, when I was like 12 years old, I also used to stream on this website called Justin TV, which is actually Twitch. It's like the older version of Twitch from over a decade ago. So I would go on Justin TV and stream to like 10 people and be like, go watch my YouTube videos. So I've always been a live streamer at heart and I just really enjoy the community, especially during this time. Like I know the pandemic is hopefully coming to an end, but having to isolate because of the pandemic and obviously be a little bit lonely, but having a platform where I can like in real time talk to thousands of you guys guys has just been like everything. It's a really good time. We have a really cute community over there. So if you guys have not come to a show, you should definitely try to come to one. So listen, <laughs> I just bought a house. And of course, as soon as I like buy a place and I settle down, I'm like, maybe I should move somewhere else. <laughs> I kind of do want to move out of LA, but I don't know when. The way I feel about it is I really actually love Los Angeles, which may be an unpopular opinion because I know a lot of people don't like it here, but I love LA. I own a home here and I think that this is where I'm going to end up like later on in my life, but I'm in my twenties and I think it'd be cool to live somewhere else for a little bit of time. I've always wanted to live in New York city at some point. You know what? If I ever do move out of LA, you shouldn't be surprised. 
Oh my god. I don't know if stink bugs don't exist in LA or what, but I don't, I have literally never seen one here, I don't think. But I am from Pennsylvania and there were so many stink bugs in Pennsylvania. If you guys don't know what a stink bug is, they're honestly, they're honestly the worst because if you squish them they literally smell like ass so you kind of have to like delicately like remove them otherwise you're just gonna be smelling ass really fun fact you guys half of my family is southern like literally half my dad's side of the family lives in the south and they all have southern accents yeah just a fun fact about my family that could have been me that could have been me Imagine if I had a southern accent. Right now, as I'm filming this video, I am currently halfway vaccinated. Wow, I can't believe it. I'm so excited. I got the Moderna vaccine. <laughs> I couldn't pick. I didn't have a choice. Not that I think it really matters that much. A vaccine is a vaccine. So if you guys have the option to get vaccinated, you should definitely do it. It is for the greater good of humanity. Okay, let's talk about this. So in case you guys didn't already know this, I identify as bisexual and my experience coming to terms with my sexuality was definitely really, really interesting, I'd say. I always knew what internalized homophobia was, but I don't think I fully grasped the concept of internalized biphobia. I think they're kind of very different things. I never had an issue with being gay, but I did have an issue with being bisexual, which is kind of weird and might not make sense to some people, but I guess the best way that I could explain it is I didn't think it was an option. When I reflect on this, I kind of think about society. I know it sounds so like stupid, but in my head, I would always be like, maybe I'm gay. Maybe I'm straight. Maybe I'm gay. Maybe I'm straight. Like I could never settle on anywhere in the middle. And then I think for me in particular, I was really confused because I've shared my whole life with the internet since I was like 12 years old. So I've always had a group of people making assumptions about me or analyzing me or whatever. And so I would go and read my comments and people would be like, I think she's gay. No, she's not gay, she's straight. No one ever was like, maybe she's bisexual. I even faced that kind of discourse in my life with, with my actual friends. I would have friends in my life being like, are you still bi or are you gay yet? And then at the same time, I'd have friends in my life who were like, maybe you're just going through a phase and you're actually straight. So it was, it was so weird. I realized basically that I had so much external influence from other people and society as a whole being so black and white of putting me into either this box or that box, that I was internalizing all of that and it made it really difficult for me to ever come to the realization that I am bisexual. I remember having like a breakthrough moment where I kind of was discussing all of this with my therapist, which we're, are we kind of getting deep here? But I was discussing this with my therapist and I started crying because I was like, oh my God, I, I am just, I'm bisexual. I'm, I'm having such a hard time figuring out my sexuality because I keep swaying between straight or gay and not thinking about the fact that there is more than just straight or gay. There is a whole spectrum of sexuality. I mean, there's more than straight, bi, and gay. People are still, I think, close-minded to the idea. And the reality of it all is that not everything is black and white. Wow, I cannot believe you remember this. I honestly forgot about this. Okay, I feel like I could talk about this because so much time has passed and this is just not happening anymore, but actually Lauren and I, a while ago, we came up with a show idea and we actually sold the show to a production company. In case you guys don't really know much about the process of creating a show, that would be like the first step of the process and it's, it's kind of hard to do. So it was a big deal. And then we started teasing it and talking about it because we really thought it was gonna happen. But then when we took the show out to different networks like Hulu and Netflix and, and places like that, um, 
No one bought it. So yeah, it pretty much just didn't go anywhere. But we did sell the show. Like we did the first part of that. And honestly, even though nothing ever came out of it, I'm really proud of us for doing that. But Lauren always holds a really, really special place in my heart. She's like family to me. And I can't believe we did that, girl. We really did that until we didn't. Dude, none of these are one word. I'm <laughs> just realizing like this is just a Q&A at this point. I really love watching TV. I like playing video games. I really love to lay outside. My favorite place to like lay is the beach. When I reflect back on growing up, I spent so much time outside and it makes a lot of sense to me now because whenever I'm feeling stressed or upset or anxious or any type of negative emotion, I just go out into my backyard and just hang out outside and get some fresh air and it really does a lot for me. So I'd say that's like my biggest and bestest leisure activity is just like relaxing outside. I also like to take baths and showers. Like I really love to just be in water. <laughs> Anyone else think cancel culture got like really intense about this time a year ago? It was kind of crazy. Like when I remember this time last year, I just think about waking up and seeing like 15 different influencers posting like a notes app apology. I was like, damn, oh my God, okay. I don't know, everyone was like apologizing for something. A lot of you guys actually submitted cancel culture as a word or like asked me my thoughts on cancel culture. And to be honest, I have like mixed feelings about it because on one hand, I, I don't think people should be canceled for things they've done like 10 years ago, but in the same breath, I do think people should be held accountable for things and be given the opportunity to grow and reflect on things that they've done in the past and apologize. But I don't think every situation deserves like this full like cancellation, you're over moment. You know what I mean? Because if we think about what the root of like holding people accountable really is, it's growth and change. Like we want people to know that what they did isn't okay and why it's not okay and they should apologize for it and change. So we need to give them that opportunity to do so. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I do think there are some things that deserve like cancellation and those type of things would be like illegal activities. We don't need those people, no. Uh, bald spot. All right, I'll remember that. I'll remember that you, Sava Taro, brought up my bald spot, which, check it out. I don't see any bald spots going on. Do I have a bald spot? Like, I'm about to watch the footage back. <gasps> oh my God, I think I did have a bald spot. But listen, it's not a real bald spot. It's just because my hair is curled. Wow, that is really a good question. It changed a lot. Um, it made me more socially anxious because I haven't like left my house all year, but it also made me healthier. I think I really needed this time and I've grown and changed a lot and I just feel like a much better version of myself. Let me go get Finn. Finny. Say hi, Finn. Okay, he loves to lick my makeup off, you guys. <laughs> Say hi, Finny. He was just sleeping, so I woke him up for this. Guys, Finney is four years old now, which is so crazy because I got him when he was like, yeah, like a month old. So I've had him for like the entire time he's been alive. And it's been four years, Finney. Four years of me and you. Okay guys, those are all of the words that I'm gonna be discussing today. This kind of ended up being more like a Q&A video because a lot of the words were more than one word. But you know what, that's okay. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, then please make sure to give it a big thumbs up. It really helps out my channel. And also leave a comment down below with one word that I should talk about the next time I do a one word suggestions video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all next Saturday with another new video. Okay, bye.